You're watching Chewing the Cud. With Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. And they said, all the leaves are brown. And I said, no. Dusky, rusty ombre, if you please. Oh. Mm. What have you got today for us then, Mike? Well, I've got about an unfortunate place to have a little nap. Or siesta in a fiesta, if you will. Siesta in a fiesta? Well. Oh, that's interesting. Mm, Dogging. Nice. No. Oh, wait and see. OK. See. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at The Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, thecud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, search for Chewing The Cud and hit subscribe, and all the marvellous things will happen. I improvised then, did you, could you, you tell? You did, because you it. I did. And you, you, you did it well. What I absolutely <laughs> love is, before that, you were going, ooh, docking, because you were rubbing your hands as you were saying docking area. And I could <laughs> not let that happen. <laughs> and as the names of people who have interacted with us travel across the bottom of the screen, we brace ourselves for this week's showbiz with Lee. I don't know about you, but I love a pop star spat. I thought you said a pop star spat then. Well, you know, it depends. I had to re redo the words in my head. Oh, OK. Spat. Yeah. A little bit of an argy-bargy. Argy-bargy. Mm, online argy-bargy. Never face-to-face. -face, no. Because they don't do it face-to-face. -face. Keyboard it's always warriors. On the, it's always on the gifts and the and the memes and all that kind of stuff. I thought you called them a maze. A maze. A maze. I like Mimi now. Yeah, Mimi. Mimi's. Anyway. All that aside, Eve first. Christina Aguilera and Bro Broccoli Spears, Christina Aquilibra and Broccoli Spears have ha had an online spat, allegedly. Okay. Apparently. Based so, on? Based on the stuff that she's been posting and one of them doesn't like it. <laughs> so, um, apparently, Christina Aguilera has unfollowed Britney Spears <laughs> on social media. Unfollowed it, that's outrageous. After, after she perceived some of Britney Spears' posts as being fat shaming towards her. Okay. Fair... <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't join him with the gallery. I'm not going to join <laughs> Fair, 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 fair. Um, <laughs> so, mid-September, what happened was Britney Spears shared a photograph with a, with a text underneath that read, I found out that the only way that I could look thin was to hang out with fat people. <laughs> um, alongside, so alongside the picture, she'd written, I wish that I could have chosen the nannies for my children, my dancers. I mean, if I had Christina Aguilera's dancers, I would have looked extremely small. So it was sort of like an... Un yeah, it was kind of like saying, well, she's a fat cow. So, um, you know, if I'd, if I'd had really fat dancers, I would have looked... F which is what... That's how I go by my life, is mixed with really... Re if people that... Are, I mean, it's so hard to believe that anybody could be fatter than me, so hard, that that's what I do. Anyway, so um, so she said, I would look extremely small. So she said, I mean, why not talk about it? Don't we think my confidence would have been a bit better if I could choose where I lived, ate, whom I called on the phone, dated, and who was on stage with me? Which, I get that, mm -hmm. but kind of like saying, if I had big, big obese dancers, I'd have looked like a stick. Did she mean obese, or did she mean big as in... Like, henchy, muscular. I don't read... Really, so, Christine Aguilera's, like, dancers are always quite muscular. Mm, you see, there's a whole story. There's a whole there's a whole l more story right oh. So she said, sometimes it's hard to see how much of my womanhood was stripped away at every time that somebody sat back and said, you know, you have to do this. Anyway, it's so... She's bleating on about conservatorship. Is that what she's whispering on about? Bleating on about it. Bleating on about it. She had, like, 20 years of being... But she won. She's OK. She's free. She can... Have babies and get married and... OK, whatever. Anyway, so, so, apparently after that was posted, Christine Regler and followed it, followed it. Now, these two have a massive long history. They initially started off on the Mickey Mouse Club. So, Britney is the at the front. The new Mickey Mouse Club. The, the, is it the new Mickey Mouse Club yeah. or the old... Re well, I want it. So, we've got the front is in the jeans is Britney. Uh -huh. And then I think Christine is the one sort of, like, directly to her right. Uh -huh. And then behind her is Justin Timberlake. Is that not her left? To, to her right is left a, a gentleman. So that's that's Ryan Gosling. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So they they've known each other since they were since they were children. Lots of Doc um, Martin shoes. And kind of have had this. Um, so it all stems from they, there's like been stuff over the years. Apparently there was there was when Britney was in the midst of the conservatorship battle, she called out. 
Christina by who was being interviewed on a red carpet for something who said when she asked about Britney Spears she kind of like sort of like dismissed it and said I'm not here to talk about that so Britney wasn't happy about that and kind of like said well you know I you know way to go about you know way, way to get my back um okay. anyway it's kind of gone on backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards with um Britney saying no I didn't mean that that's not what I meant I kind of meant that, you know, she said, by no means was I being critical critical of Christina's beautiful body. Um, it is what it is. Is it I beautiful love that. in every I single love... way? Words can't bring her down. I love that phrase, it is what it is. Because that's like saying, I'm taking no responsibility for this. It is what it is. Um, so she did this huge, lengthy caption about how, you know, she, so she posted, so we've got a picture of Crit Crickney? Crickney. Crickney and, <laughs> and Christina. Britney and Christina, back in the noughties, when they were friends with each other, um, when they were kind of like, um, I know I said something really politically incorrect, when they got together with Madonna and did that kiss mm -hmm. on stage. Um, so she basically... Queer she, baiting, I believe that's called. Queer baiting. Queer baiting. OK. Um, so she said, by no means did I even mention Christina in my post. I was inspired by a show, and I think she's a beautiful woman. Um, Thank you, Xtina, for ex for supporting me. Um, and then she can she basically well, kind of thank you for supporting thank me. You for, but she didn't though, did yeah, exactly. she? Exactly. I think that's um, a bit snarky. So yeah. So th th then she posted another picture. Have we got that little picture of the little fairies? We've got a little pet. Yeah, that's her post. So she kind of posted this oh. insinuate that it was them two. Oh, just have sex and get over it. Just just shut up. So you know, just, if anybody cares, that's what's no going cares. on in the world of Christina, I want a fight. I want a physical fight. See, if that happened, fun. In a right? It's not, yeah. oh, she tagged me in something un not quite flattering towards she me. She said my dances were fat. Well, you, well, she didn't. She said big. Well, there you go. Anyway, girls, just kiss and make up. Get on with it. Um, so a little bit more light-hearted news now. OK. You have two mums, don't you? I do. Peppa Pig, the kids' TV show, uh -huh. has introduced its first same-sex parent characters. OK. Um, so it's been running since 2004, and they aired an episode called Families early September, where Penny Polar Bear uh -huh. um, drew a picture of her family, explaining that she had two, mum two mummies. Two mummies. Two mummies. Mummies. Um, <laughs> that was a completely different episode. Um, so these are a picture of the. Of, they look quite shocked for some reason. I don't. I think they all. Peppa Pig parents look like shocked. They're shocked. So, um, so <laughs> I, they're like, I'm a talking pig. Uh, <laughs> I live with my mummy and my other mummy. One mummy is a doctor and one mummy cooks spaghetti. The little character said. Okay. Um, um, so this is the first time that a same-sex couple has. Is that is that a euphemism? Is that a lesbian euphemism? Because you're not like an expert because you've got two mums. Is cooking spaghetti like a lesbian? <laughs> is, is it? <laughs> You know the the non correct joke, which is um, also just a straight man a bisexual man at six cans of Stella. Yes. Yeah. The difference between a lesbian is a part of spaghetti. No, it's about every woman's spaghetti, straight until it's wet. Oh, do you think they did that on purpose? It's like an in. I think they oh, might have done that on purpose. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So back <laughs> back in 2019, a petition was launched. To a petition, a, 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 a petition was launched to get the show to introduce a same-sex family. They received more than twenty-eight thousand signatures, so they finally introduced the same-sex parents, and they're kind of like saying children watching Peppa Pig are an impressionable age, and excluding same-sex families will teach them that only families with either a single parent or two parents of a different sex is are normal. Mm -hmm. This means that children of same-sex parents may feel alienated, which I get. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's more likely that. If we into you know we're learning we're getting children to learn, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean we've got a picture of Polly and Pepper um, um, on uh, having fun in the snow as they do. Um, the only thing I've got to get polar bear in gay male terms is a gentleman of a of a, of a certain age, isn't it? A polar bear. That's quite Not necessarily age. Oh, okay. it's hair colouring. White. Or grey. Okay. Very grey. Very grey. Very grey. Very grey. Very grey. Um, I think fantastic. I don't... It, I, it's one of those... I, 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 you know, going off topic, I had a, a rant on uh, on social media last week with, with you somebody... You think you're Britney? Um, no, it wasn't about Britney. It was about a gentleman who who um, was very upset at the fact that the um, actress, who is playing a fictional fish-based character in a upcoming movie is is black and not white and did not like that. No. And no. I was, ooh, 
So, and, and, um, yeah, people, yeah, people are, can be very stupid. Yes. In terms of things. So I think, oh, good for them. Great. Good. Wonderful. Okay. Anyway, enough about me. That's enough of this week's showbiz news. I'm off to frot the sofa. Yeah, um, thanks for that, Lee. Always exciting to know that you have things to do on a sofa. Totally welcome. But stick around us next. It's Mike with the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's go over to Mike and find out what he's got for us in the buzz. What have you got today for us, Entrico? Okay. Um, you like to go out for a meal on occasion, don't you? I do. Yes, so much so that you might even miss a show. Well, that wasn't because of the meal. That was just because of other circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> what circumstances were they? I didn't look at the ticket. But I, to, in my, to my defence, why would I book a matinee? I would never book a matinee. <coughs> I would always book an evening. So then, Apart from the time you booked a matinee. Yeah, but I didn't, though. Because I, 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 my intention was to... Anyway, it's not about me. <laughs> it's about... Um, well, imagine you're sitting down to a lovely meal. Yes. In a chain restaurant. OK. OK. That may have something to do with sort of like atmospheric changes and cutlery. Weather spoons. Oh, OK. Yes. Um, when, when suddenly you, you feel a little bit of dripping something on your head. I would never be in a weather spoons first of all. But... Why not? Because they're awful places. <laughs> They're not awful places. They are. You can get, like, a pint and a burger for £2. I don't want to get a pint and a burger for £2. One pint, me, don't think so. Um, <laughs> this is a pint of... <laughs> Lime and soda. <laughs> <laughs> pint of jizz. Um, no, you I can just... get those in a burger <laughs> as well. <laughs> Different bar. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't approve of them. You don't approve of them? No. Okay. Um, well, I... So something's dripping on your head in a Weatherspoons. Yeah. Well, okay. feel, feel, feel like we don't frequent them, as the cricketers in Ipswich, yeah, as people were sat down eating their, their meal and pint and felt a foul-smelling liquid drip on them. Oh, a foul-smelling liquid. Which turned out to be the sewage pipes from the toilets upstairs. Ugh. It leaked. Ugh. But dripping. to be fair, that might only improve the atmosphere of a weather spoons. But you said you've not don't go in them, so how would you know? I just imagine what they would be like. They're not that horrible. Smell of like I mean ethically bankrupt. Yeah. Right? And you know, run by a monster. Yeah. In my honest opinion. Yeah. But yeah. No. But yeah. yeah. Weatherspoons is the is the lynx deodorant of the of the catering world. You're bad mouthing lynx products, are you? Yeah, they're just like it's just there, isn't it? Mm. Certain clientele. So you can tell. Mm. Like people that use Lynx products. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, I mean, the, I know where you're. I know where you're going with this. What am I going with this? And and the the product that I use <laughs> is Lynx. Is for Lynx, but it it's a different Lynx. kind of product. Yes. Um, for homosexuals. <laughs> <laughs> really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well I shall move on from from. Oh, so we just just shit on them, shit from the ceiling on the heads, no, carried no, no. on eating, drank the pipes, <laughs> then left. <laughs> yeah. Happy days. Yeah. We don't know whether it was poo. They haven't confirmed what the liquid was. We know it was a foul-smelling liquid from the toilets. Could have been. Could have been piss. Could have just been some heavy pee. You could have been, yeah, wheaty. Wheaty. Mm. What's wheaty? Sometimes. P can be wheaty, smell wheaty. Right, OK. I thought wheaty, as in a cup of tea made oh, from no, wheat. Oh, no, no. Well, there are places where you can get that, um, but um, I have never those frequented too. those. OK. Uh, well, moving on, because you like insects. No. Yes, you do. I don't. You have this, this fascination with spiders that originate on the other side of the world. I don't like living. them. I don't like their friends. OK. But, you know. So you don't have huntsman pets, then? No. Just admit you don't have huntsmans. That's good. I do. Um, have huntsmans. You don't have huntsmans. You don't. Well, this is this is news for exciting over the next few weeks. You need to prepare yourself because we're expecting homes to be taken over by taken a, over taken over, right? By around about two hundred billion daddy long legs. Don't mind the daddy long legs. Two hundred billion of them. Well, they're not all going to be two hundred billion in my house. All of <laughs> two hundred billion of them. <laughs> Don't have the bed space. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> don't 
people have the bed space <laughs> for, for two million dummy long legs. legs. <laughs> they can share. They don't have to have a king yeah. each. <laughs> okay, why, why are we getting 200 billion daddy long legs? This? Um, so, because we've had an un unusually hot summer, mm -hmm. yeah, before the summer, they're all at it. <laughs> and normally, the coldness in the atmosphere kills, kills some of them, them off. Okay. So, only a few survive. However, they probably all survive because it's not been cold at all. Right? So, as the weather now starts to cool down, they start coming forth, shall we say? Coming forth. Coming forth. And going, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who I am? You just get, you just pick them up by the legs and then just put them back outside. With the other 200 million of them. It's a busy day. <laughs> it's a very busy day. Very busy oh, day. all I've done all, all day. day. <laughs> take the busy, busy, take them out. Daddy long legs. Yeah. Um, when, I was, when I was a child, right? Um, you used to burn them, didn't you? No. Worse. Pull a leg off. Oh, you release them. They're still alive. They're still going around with a, a leg. But you can basically pull the tendon so you can make them do that. I don't like you. <laughs> I, was a I, was a, I was a weird child. Yeah. They know what they say about weird children. Grow up to be weird adults. Yeah. You're a weird why, child as well. Why? I mean, <laughs> I'm getting pink lighting effect for, on my face from your clothing. So and you're do. calling yeah, me but at least I didn't. At least I don't like pull the limbs off creatures. One limb. Off an eight-limbed insect. See, why would, why would nature create something that is so crap? <laughs> Look, make it a bit more sturdy. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> my legs don't fall off that easily. So really pull them and <laughs> come off. But they, you can literally just get them and they go, bink, yep. and they've gone. They're What's the point of that? Because then if someone... Ca the reason is because if another predator catches them by the legs, right. they go, uh-huh, woohoo, I'm free. <laughs> I've got another six equally fragile legs that <laughs> yes, I can carry they, myself off on. They fly more than, than walk. Oh, OK. So the, the legs are there for balance and landing. OK, well, I'm, I'm, I'm forewarned. Forearmed is forewarned. Forewarned is forearmed, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, well, two-armed. I have five limbs. Can't see one of them. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh dear. Lee's micropenis, everybody. Because <laughs> you can't see it. <laughs> and if you've got an interesting thing about your limbs, please feel free to share with us at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely over to our story of the week. Have you ever had a nap in your car? <laughs> Hilarious question that that is. No, it's all right. Um, I have indeed. And how did you decide to have a nap? Was it a safety thing? Or no, just I was that? tired, Mike. <laughs> no, but the thing, if you're on a long journey, you're supposed to pull over and have a rest. Oh, no, we'd never do that. <laughs> oh, no. I'll never do the thing I'm supposed no, to do no, for no, safety no. if I'm on a long no, journey. I'll no. never, <laughs> never pull over and get, have a rest no. so I'm not tired. You know, like if you're at night, oh, scary. That's how horror films start. I would, I would pull into, um, I would pull into um, services, quite possibly, well lit. <laughs> Have a slumber there. No, I'm kind of like no meaning only like if I'm like I'm early for something. Okay. Just a few, you know, just a little little napette in the car. Why are you laughing? This is what this is what this is this is life. I don't like fall asleep at the wheel <laughs> and carry her have, off. I would have one for safety reasons. No, I would but, if oh, I needed would. to. Yeah, I wouldn't right. like carry it and go, oh, I'm not having a nap. <laughs> that just um, <laughs> not just on long journeys where you're supposed no. to have one. You're like, oh, no, I wouldn't have one then. No, no, not at night though, because that's scary. But, so if you're on a long journey at night and you're feeling tired... I would pull in somewhere well lit. You would lit. pull over to yes. have a nap. Yes. OK. Right. Anyway, what are you talking about? Um, so this is about a lady who's 45 who's horrified to find her favourite lay-by for taking a break. Oh, I think I've seen this story. I've just seen the picture of her. Yeah. I've gone, ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's a seedy hotspot. She's been approached twice in 48 hours for a bit of woohoo. She didn't know. What a load of old tut. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Well, it was where I just came here to read my book. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I came here to read my book. <laughs> ba -la 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 -la. <laughs> <laughs> she knew full well. Why she's in the back seat. It's not like she just pulled over. Oh, I'm just going to read my book for fact. She's like, legs akimbo. <laughs> Snacks. 
I'll let you don't have snacks in your car. I don't pull over to the side of the road. I eat them when I'm driving. <laughs> I don't. That's very, very dangerous. Do not do that. Um, so she she, that, she she goes here a lot mm -hmm. to read her book. To read her book. To read her book. And she's found that it's a dogging hot spot. Oh, look at all the penises. No, I don't believe her. Um, so she was rudely interrupted when a scruffy looking man who was at least 60, came and peered at her through a car window. I... Uh, imagine that they just took the penis out and wrote hello at the end in a snail trail. Hello. Me. Hello. <laughs> hello with a snail trail. The, the we're drippy penis. High, we're looking to get a high out, really. It's 60. <laughs> um, uh, so, in shock, she didn't say anything and claimed that she didn't give him the nod. As he she back claimed. To, yeah, as he wandered back to his car and drove off. Oh. Has she got this? Has she got the what? She's got the same cover as me. <laughs> that was another part of the story I was going to share. <laughs> what kind of person... What kind of person... ...would have... ...sits there... <laughs> ...going, I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, apparently another one um, came and knocked on the window, sort of thing. So she didn't drive off after the first no. one came up. She read in a book. Oh, um, one off. Um, basically, she shrugged it off as one off, and then someone else came over, um, and then she started mouthing expletives at him. Oh, okay. I mean, that's how I, I flirt. Um. So she she said um, she was trying to have a bit of a break before she went back to work. Oh, it was no, okay. Right, All right. And try and then had something to eat and watch a bit of TV. What she said she was going to do at work. Oh god. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike. I think she was in a caravan. A caravan. A caravan. Caravan. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, stick with us because after the break we have our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we're playing Movie Moes, and this is one for a very own Mo who moves. It's Mike. So off you go. Mo over there. Move. Game of the Week. So this week, what we're going to do is I'm going to list some movies, and you have to work out what the common theme is. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. So the first one, are you ready? Yes. Good. Snakes on a plane. Airplane. Airplane two. What have I got to do? I'm going to list some movies and you have to come up with the common theme. So what, what oh, the okay. All right, I'll say. Right, okay. I thought, sorry, I wasn't really listening the first time around. That's um, a surprise. <laughs> so the first one, snakes on a plane. Yeah. Airplane. Yeah. Airplane two. Planes. Yes. Is that as simple as that? Simple as that. Oh, okay. Okay. Independence Day. Mm-hmm. And you've got um, James Bond with, uh, what's his face, Daniel Craig, when he goes back, when he gets recalled because he's not very good, so they put him through tests. Skyfall. The sky. No. Is movies, it? Movies where buildings get blown up. Oh, that's very niche, that, Mike. Yes, it is niche. Um, okay, next one. Um, Madagascar. Mm. Uh, Zootropolis. Mm. Um, flubber? No. Flubber? Not flubber. Not flubber. Um, Life of Pi. Um, films with animated animals in them. Not Life of Pi. That's got an animated animal in it. Not animated. It is. CGI'd. Okay, um, movies where one of the main characters is an animal. Okay, next one. Mean Girls. Mm-hmm. Um, Notting Hill. Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, 
Rom-coms. No, no, not just rom-coms. There's something about the rom-coms. They all do something in the rom-com. Um, what else? Somebody dies. Wolf of Wall Street. I've not seen that. Oh. There's a gay character in it. No. Um, oh, this Mrs. Is... Doubtfire. I don't know. All movies that have a ba- breakup at the start. There's what? Movies that have a breakup. He's making it up. It's your f-ing game. Are you not just making things up from your head? Are you not just like no. making films? Like, oh, for God, he's not even following the questions. Is it not why you describe a film and I've got to name the film, not like what links films together? But those cards aren't there. What cards have you got? The head to head ones. What do they say on them? Just pick a film off one of them and describe it. Oh, okay. You say it, George. Right, next one. Confessions of an an alcoholic. Confessions of a shopaholic. Okay. Um, Sex in the City. Films where they go shopping. Yes, well done. The Sword in the Stone. Yeah. Um, the Knights of King Arthur kind of films. Knights of Camelot. Monty Python's Camelot thing. Medieval romps. The Med- Sword in the Stone. About King Arthur? No. Oh, stop getting so angry! Movies with swords in it. Well, that's too obvious, isn't it? Just oh, obviously not, because you didn't get it. I said the, the sword in the stone, and like King Arthur. How long have I been here today? Oh, oh. I'm, I'm skipping that one. That was things where things get stolen. Right. Time. Madagascar. Oh, you've said that. It's just. It's a different reference. Right. Right. Madagascar. Yeah. Mummy. Yeah. Um, moonshite. <laughs> Moonlight. What What do those three movies have in common? Cher was in them. She wasn't in Madagascar. She might have been a voice. <laughs> she was. I don't know. Movies beginning with the letter M. Oh, you can f*** off with this. <laughs> right, okay. Oliver. Les Mis. Music. Phantom. Yes. War Horse. Yeah. War Horse. You need to know more than just that. Horses. Thank you. Dark Knight Rises. Seen that one? I'm aware of it. A Batman film, isn't it? It is a Batman film, so forget about that one. Carry on Matron. Right. Um, Holby City, the movie. Medical themed. Movies with a hospital, that's close enough. Superman. Peter Pan. Um, Ed Knobs and Broomsticks. Um, Aladdin. Are they all films that have had Robin Williams in them? Oh. Don't cry. That's a, that was a serious. I might actually look quite nice in this camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> right. What were you saying? So, Peter Pan. Yes. Superman. 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 Yes. Aladdin. Well, I said. The odd one out is Superman because Robin spot, Williams wasn't... Spot the odd one. It's what they have in common and it's the fact that someone can fly. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. The movie Twins. Yeah. Right. Twins, the movie. Yeah. Um, Something with the Olsen twins in it. I can't remember the name of the film. Film about twins. There, thanks. Right, Titanic, The Life of Pi. 
on the sea. Set on the sea. Boats. Yeah, with a boat. Yep. Drownings. Yes, boats. Right. Um, Matilda. I just realised it says deserts rather than desserts. Sorry. I misread a card. The not the crown. And um, the King's Speech. Queen Elizabeth. Shakespeare in Love. Films about royalty. Yes. <laughs> Top lip. Other side. Other side. There. Yeah. There There's what, nothing what there. There was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, next one. Jumanji. Mm. Saw. Films about games. Yes. See, you've got it now. Mm. Muriel's Wedding. Films about murials. <laughs> Films about weddings. Yes. The Beach. Um, the Life of Pi. It, it isn't films about where there's a beach in it. It is, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> right. Independence Day. Oh, God, we've done this again. We're going down. What was your first guess on Independence Day? Alien Invasion. Yes. Um. Back to the Future. Back to the Future 2. Um. I can't help feeling you're not really into this. I one. can't think of the name of the film. I'm not good with films. Is it films about time travel? It is, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Um, Footloose. <laughs> like that. Um, the Breakfast Club. Okay, okay, okay. Films with Kevin Bacon in them. No. Oh. Um. Oh, what's it? Um, Slumdog Millionaire. Musicals. No. Films with musical bits in them. No. Films about dancing. Films with dancing in them. Yeah. Oh. Uh, last one, Harry Potter, Harry Potter 2, Harry Potter 3. Films written by a hideous transphobe. No. No? No. Um, Films about magic. Futurama, yes. Not Futurama, Fantasia. But yeah, that's it. Wow, that was thrilling. You did quite well, though. Yeah. 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 Yes, after this break, is that science, that is? back to Chewing the Cod. Now it's that part of the show where Louis Pasteur digs himself up from the grave and then kills him himself so he doesn't have to watch it. It's Mike and that's science that is. That's science that is. There's the man who brings us crafty queens. Were you impressed that I knew, I knew a name of another scientist person? What was his name? Louis Pasteur. Pasteur. Pasta. Pasteur gave his name to pasteurisation. He did? Yes. When did you Google that? I know, I already knew it. Oh, OK. Um, so today we are, we're going to be checking the difference between alkalides or bases and acids. Oh, God, I'm bored already. But we need, to, we need to make something called universal indicator. <sighs> right? Now, you should have. It's colour changing. It feels a bit magic. Right? So you've got some... some Red cabbage. Cabbage. Red cabbage. And some hot water. Rouge cabbage. Yes. All you need to do is you need to chop up your red cabbage quite finely into the water. Oh, okay. I've given you a pair of scissors to do that with. You have? Yeah. So just go choppy choppy into the water. Choppy water. choppy cookie cleany. And I apologise to anybody whose accent you were trying to do there. <laughs> Ba -ba -de -be -ba -de. Um, what so are you aiming for? I was kind of going for like Mario Brothers. Right, okay. Mario, ba -ba -de -be -ba -de -ba. Um, so I'm just very finely chopping this. Just choppy, 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 yeah. You want a lot of surface area. How 
How much? Um, quite a bit. Oh. But as you'll see, as it's starting to hit the hot water, yeah, it's starting to ooze colour. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Do you like red cabbage? I love red general? cabbage. You see, I'm one of those people. I, I, I'll just quite happily just take a, a chunk of. What do you eat it with? Ah. What? Big chunk of red cabbage, tasty. Does it? Do you not have it with something? Well, if I, I like to also make like um, like a pickle out of it. Oh. With some ginger and, like, what's it called? Sauerkraut. But Asian styley. That's a bit racist. What's that? No, Asian food style. Okay. What's it called? Um, I don't know. Kimchi. That's a drag queen. And it's a, a it's a cabbagey sauerkraut thingy. Oh. As well. What's a mukbang? Huh? What's a mukbang? <laughs> From what I'm aware, it's something very different. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. They go on about it all the time on 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 face um, on FaceTube on FaceTube um, <laughs> FaceTube a new book <laughs> yeah Ooh, we're having a mukbang and it's always just some people just eating things. No idea. Maybe the gallery could Google it for us. Gallery, what's a mukbang? I'm on television, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and the people in TV land can't hear them, so <laughs> if you haven't remembered. So, let, let's just have a quick look at your water. So it started to change colour. Oh, it's gone very purple. Very right? purple. It's good very purple. It? Mukbang from the gallery. Mukbang. Oh, yeah. oh, that's all it is. It's just people eating loads of filled while they're being filmed. Mmm. <laughs> Mukbang. Yeah. I, I got slightly confused between that and the bukake. See, that's what I thought it was. Which is a Japanese boat party. It is, yes. Uh, do I need... So, I've chopped a very... I've done, I've done quite a considerable amount as well now. So I have, just yeah. need, Give it a bit of an agitation with your knife. A what? You've got a knife. Give it an agitation. Oh. Give it a bit of a stir, because you want, you want quite a lot of the purpley liquid. Okay. Now, I have given you some substances in which to test this. Okay. Okay. So, you've got um, some white powder. Yes. Okay. And on the same plate as the white powder, which is um, baking powder. Yes. You have some amber liquid. Honey. Taste it. No. I'll smell it. <laughs> okay, smell it. Oh, is that is that molasses on your sheets? It's maple syrup. <laughs> maple syrup, yeah. Maple syrup. I love maple syrup. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to test. Right. So if you pop a little bit of your purpley liquid, if you use the knife to strain onto your Maple syrup. Just pour a little bit onto the maple syrup. A little syrup. bit on and give it a mix. What am I doing? So you're putting some of the... Liquid on the maple liquid syrup. Liquid on the maple syrup. How much? Just a little just bit? Just a little bit. Okay. And then mix it with my knife. And then give it a bit of a mix just so to, so to get it incorporated. Okay, nothing's happened. Okay, now you'll, you'll notice on the side of the plate where the liquid is. Yeah. Turn around, around for the camera. It's got a little bit, bit ready there. Um. Meals, it's mildly acidic. Oh, okay. Okay. And if you do the same for your, your white powder. What? Pour. Pour a little bit of the liquid onto your white powder. Oh, it's frothing, Mike. It's oh, frothing. Oh, it's frothing. Oh. It's going blue. It's going blue, which means that that is a base or alkaline. You're getting a blue froth. Okay. It's exciting. And then if you pop a little bit of your other liquid onto it, it should then turn red. And what? Back on the, the... Yeah. You should see it change colour back again. It's gone blue. It's still... No, it's going ready on the phone, on mine. 
fairly, but yes. Would you like to see a little bit more exciting of a reaction? Yeah. Okay. So pour into your, you've got a conical flask. Yeah. Pour some of your liquid with none of your bits into your conical flask. How much okay. liquid? Just... <gasps> oh, you pissed out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what? A little bit of cabbage has gone well, in. I'll fling it all out and start again. Oh, okay. Whatever you do, don't get this on your clothes. So you want at least 50 millilitres. Concentration with the tongue out there. How much? 50 millilitres. So up to the first line. Ish. That'll do. Okay. Now on your on your other plates you have a clear liquid. I do. Yes. Pour that into your conical flask. See what happens. Okay. Oh, you see, that's difficult. <gasps> What's happened, Lee? It's gone red. But it happens instantly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do it in an angle that the people at home can see. I'm covering it with my arms. So I go purply liquid. And then. Oh! oh. Yeah. Right? And now if you. See, the gallery being smart asses now. Now change it back. Right? And now if you take some of your, your, your foamy stuff that turns stuff blue. Yeah. You pop that in. It changes back to purple. Oh, pinky purple. Give it a wiggle. There you go, it's, it's pinky purpley now. Mm -mm, yeah. So yeah. That's not magic, that's science that is. That's science that is. Thanks. You can drink it though. You drink it. It's neutralised. You drink it. It's cabbage water. You drink it. Well, mine's over there. You have to drink it. No, you can drink mine. You've offered me that before though. But you, but you made it. You, you made you that one. You invented it. You I invented, invented this. it. You directed it. I directed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at the Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv, and of course on podcasts and YouTube services. Search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye! Hey. What will happen if I...